Now that we understand the spatial and structural differences between the endo and exo products, the burning question is which of these two isomers is favored? As it turns out, generally the endo product is favored. To some extent, this is actually a little bit surprising because the endo product seems more sterically hindered than the exo product because the CHO groups or the substituents more generally are on the same side of this carbon carbon as this carbon carbon double bond, which seems more sterically crowded than being on the same side as just this one carbon CH2 bridge. Nonetheless, the endo product is generally favored, and this is an observation known as the Alder endo rule. It's particularly true and particularly reliable when the substituents on the dienophile contain pi bonds or lone pairs. And that's absolutely the case here. Keep in mind that the CHO substituent, that's an aldehyde, and it contains a carbonyl group, CO double bond. The CO pi bond fits right into this category. The dienophile does indeed contain a pi bond. And so in this case, the endo product is absolutely the major product. Now, given the increased steric hindrance, we need to rationalize this by appealing to something going on in the transition state that makes formation of the endo product faster than formation of the exo product. And the, the rationalization, the explanation of this has to do with orbital interactions between the diene and dienophile that actually don't lead directly to bonds but still lead to stabilizing delocalization of electrons, overlap of a filled orbital with an empty orbital that allows electrons to spread out a little bit. That's a stabilizing effect. These are known as secondary orbital interactions because they're not directly related to formation of the sigma bonds in this step. They happen between the substituent pi orbitals and the inner pi orbitals of the diene. So to show you what I mean by that, and the slide highlights it, there's a favorable interaction between the two and three carbons of the diamond, these inner carbons that actually don't form the new sigma bonds, and any pi orbitals on the substituents. And so, for example, we can imagine p orbitals on the diene here in red, and I've just drawn them in phase just for the purposes of illustration. We've got p orbitals on the substituents as well. Each of those CO linkages has a pi bond, right? And so there's overlap of the pi or pi star orbitals associated with those CO double bonds with the p orbitals on the diene. And this is stabilizing orbital overlap, generally from the electron-rich diene, the nucleophilic diene, to the electron-poor dienophile. And this arrangement leads to the endo product. Notice that the aldehyde groups are underneath the diene. That's the endo orientation. One thing to note here is that this kind of secondary orbital overlap, this secondary orbital interaction, is not possible in the exo transition state. Now let's back up a slide to convince ourselves of that. So the in, in this picture, the secondary orbital interactions happen between the aldehyde groups. Actually, let's look at the Newman projection view, the aldehyde groups and the diene carbons, which are a lot closer to each other than this picture gives it credit for, but you get the idea. If I flip over the dienophile, that moves the CHO groups way out here, right? And so now they're nowhere near carbons two and three of the diene. And that's what's going on in the exo transition state. Now these groups have no orbital overlap whatsoever with carbons two and three of the diene because they're nowhere near those carbons. So that stabilizing secondary orbital interaction is missing in the transition state that leads to the exo product. This is why the endo product is the major product. We can put all this together to generate a general transition state for Diels-Alder reactions and put together what's a, a pretty cool sort of toggle rule for predicting stereochemistry in Diels-Alder reactions. I call it the out endo cis rule. Now, I did not invent this. I have to give credit where credit is due. Bob Grossman, as far as I'm concerned, at the University of Kentucky is the inventor of the out endo cis rule. And to understand the out endo cis rule, I actually don't want to talk about the rule just yet. I want to talk about what we mean by out and in and endo and exo. So any deals alder reaction between a diene and an alkene dienophile can be thought of like this. The groups that are underneath the diene or that approach closer to the diene are the endo groups on the dienophile and the groups pointed outward are the exo groups and here endo groups in red, exo groups in blue. Now on the diene we can imagine the diene forming a shape of a letter C here. The diene carbons in the S cis orientation form the shape of the letter C. The groups that are outside of that C we're going to call out and here they're highlighted in yellow. 
the groups that are inside that C or inside that sort of semicircle formed by the diene conformation, we're going to call N and we're representing those in green. This picture in the middle is an entirely general deals alder transition state. The diene on top, dienophile underneath, and all of those colored groups labeled in their appropriate positions. So one thing to notice here, first of all, the new bonds are forming here. Here's a new sigma bond and here's a new sigma bond. Notice that the blue and green groups are going to end up cis to each other. And then by default, the red and yellow groups are going to end up cis to each other en route to the product. And that's shown here. Notice green and blue are cis, red and yellow are cis to each other. In the language of out in endo and exo, exo in will be cis to each other. Out endo will be cis to each other. We can put all this together into a general toggle rule for drawing deals all their products. Groups that are out in the diene and endo in the dienophile will end up cis in the product. Groups that are out in the diene and exo in the dienophile will end up trans in the product. Groups that are in in the diene and endo in the dienophile will end up trans in the product and groups that are in in the diene and exo in the dienophile will end up cis in the product. So you can combine this toggle rule with the alder endo rule, which says if you've got pi bond or lone pair containing substituents, those will go endo. That allows you to orient the dienophile. You can combine that idea from the previous slide with the out endo cis rule to draw a complete Diels alder react uh, product, Diels alder product with stereochemistry just from the structures of the reactants.